stop right now. Thank you very much. I need somebody with a human touch. We just said this before we started recording, but I think it would be a disservice if we were not to follow the trajectory of Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen by pumping out albums. Good children. Ooh. You know what it's kind of? It's kind what of giving it? Drake and Josh. Ooh. Ooh. Right? Isn't that how it ends? It is kind of giving Drake and Josh. Yeah. I mean, that kind of makes sense. I feel like we we are very coded in there. Which nature. one's I'm Drake? I would hope I was Josh. Oh, but Drake, I mean, Drake has had some difficult years since the show. But you're oh, saying you mean like the, in real life? Drake and Josh cinematic universe? Yeah. Yeah, you'd probably be. Well, yeah, you'd be Josh. You wouldn't like disappear for a bit? Didn't he disappear? In real life, he went missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah after like horrible charges brought against him. Yeah. Like, and nudes leaked. Hey guys, and welcome back to another sunny and beautiful episode of Good Children, the podcast where hosts Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarella reflect on our 22 years of friendship, growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s, and all of the nostalgia, trauma, and peer pressure scenarios that come along with it. There's nothing like being pressured to do something that you don't want to do. Have you ever been peer pressured? I feel like I've definitely experienced peer pressure in the day. Like what? I mean, obviously everyone knows when it comes to drinking, you feel fear. This is another There's something happening. There's something happening with the way that I'm speaking lately. And I don't know if it's just I'm morphing into being so gay. Are you experiencing um, rapid thoughts? Yeah, because you're seeing me speak at like a rate that's not normal. I, I can almost, and I'm the fastest talker I know and I don't enunciate. I'm starting to struggle. It's you're getting faster and faster. Me. But yes, back to peer pressure, absolutely. Drinking, food, just what going out. Food? I Even feel peer like when, pressured into eating food? I absolutely believe so. I feel like if you were trying something that you might not have wanted to try or have had like some mm, feelings towards, and then can you're you with a group me, of can people. Can you give me an example? Fish. You were peer pressured into eating fish. Fish. You were peer pressured into trying fish. Let's say you were at a table with friends and other people had fish and you were like, ew, fish. And they were like, just try it. And I'm like, no. And they were like, just do it. And I'm like, just call it being convinced to try fish. I guess you can talk about convincing or you could say peer pressure. If uh, It depends on how you fe- feel, how you take it. So what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about peer pressure and we're talking about it in all of its forms. Um... We're talking childhood peer pressures. We're talking current day peer pressures. We're talking relationships. We're talking drinking. We're talking anything and everything that has a peer and has a double P. A PP? We're talking PPs today. You didn't call it a PP, right? I call it a PSHE. A PSHE. And I'm not really sure where that comes from. Is it Italian? Listen, the Italian police are going to come for us, but... My mother did call it a pishi, and I think that's kind of beautiful, if you ask me. I also think it could double as, like, my my second-born son's name. You're going to name your second-born son Penis? Pishi. Penis. Well, it depends on how you take it. No matter what, you're taking it as a dick. You know what I mean? And I am. I'm Aww. sorry. Um... I feel like it was PP for me for sure. I don't think if I have kids, I would ever be able to do that shit. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, it's going to be your penis. Like, yeah. we're going to talk like adults in this house. Yeah, we're not going to talk to our children like we're children. And like their pets. And their pets, yeah. Oh, your pee pee. pee. <laughs> because it's a, it's a, it goes both ways. It's like you're you're addressing your pee pee, but that you're going pee pee. So like, what the hell is it? Right. Who's my PP? Peer pressure. Peer pressure. Um, I feel like for the most part, in my adolescence, I didn't really succumb to peer pressure. Do you know what I mean? Were you really around peers? Yeah, I went to by? school. I, guess I went you're to right. school and I definitely like knew people. Yeah. And I think that I always saw I was always just like just the right amount of bitch. Yeah. You know, where it was like 
someone was trying to peer pressure me into doing something and I was like, good luck with the rest of your life. Your brain isn't even fully developed. You're going to drink alcohol. Like, you're a fuck. You're already a fucking idiot. Yeah. You're going to make it worse. Go ahead. Again, it was the good child in you. I think that, like, your your demeanor always has been kind of giving bitch, but not in the, not because you're a bitch. It's because you're a, you're maybe a little bit anxious or you were a little bit insecure or something, so you kind of give RBF. I'm sorry. You're actually just reading me. You're like, I'm anxious <laughs> I'm like, and insecure and a bitch. <laughs> like, so you're anxious, insecure and a bitch, but not now like when you were a kid. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? I think I just, again, I wasn't willing to be put in situations that I didn't want to be in. And I yeah. also wasn't willing to deal with people who I thought were... Who I think more so when I sensed insecurity on someone else, Mm. I was like, you're not bringing me down with this shit. I already have my own shit to deal with. Like, you're going to smoke weed at 16 because you, like, think it's cool. That's great for you. And you're not getting a job. Right. And I'm going to be in my bedroom making tea in my Keep Coming Carry On mug and listening to Mumford and Sons. Yes. And, And like, look at me now. And look at you now. Which one of you has a job? The other person probably. The other person yeah, probably yeah, has yeah, a job sure. that was smoking weed at 16 years old. I was thinking, though, the other night when we were at Metropolitan um, and those listeners came up to you, I was yes. with Gary, and he was like, oh, my God, they're going to come up to you next. And I was like, literally no shot they're going to come up to me next. <laughs> like, there's no shot. Like, it's so it's so easy to tell when someone is, like, just a fan of Andrew or a fan of the podcast. And, like, I watched these two people come up to Andrew, and then Gary was like, no, they're going to come up to you. That Andrew, Andrew, I just, fully Andrew went, just pointed at you. I fully went, Joe's right yes. over there. He's like, like, oh. he's like, and then they literally, they turn around and just immediately walk away. And Gary was like, oh, are you like the mean one? Are people afraid of you? And I was like, I guess that's what's happening. Like, you know, I think that you're just like, when people come up to us and they're like, I'm an Andrew, I'm a Joe. It's like, you call it straight. You know what I mean? You're not afraid to say it how it is. Yeah, I don't give it to and peer pressure. Some, you don't. And some people get nervous about that. But it's like, what do you think I'm going to do? If you're a listener and you approach me on the street, I'm not going to slap you in the face. Joe's going to punch you in I the face. I live for it. Although what, recently, again, we've actually, I guess since moving to Brooklyn, we've had more and more run-ins with listeners, which is I literally like it. It's incredible. It's like getting an IV drip in a way, which I think maybe isn't a great thing sociologically. Because but like, we both need actual IV, IV drips, drips or just um, to drink water. Yeah. Speaking of which, this is um this is sour apple flavored, green apple flavored water. Here he goes. It's so fucking good. Um, but someone recently was like, "Oh my god, I wasn't gonna stop you because I know you said you hate when people come up to you." And I was like, "Did I say that verbatim on the podcast?" I think that what you said on the podcast was like, kind not know your time and place. Yeah, but. It is like a because we did we have experienced it before when we were out like on at dates. a club yeah. or on dates. I think it was more Main, on a date. mainly dating, yeah. And like you know, but, especially if it was a first date, you can't clock it, yeah. and then it's like for me the situation that I think I was addressing was on Valentine's Day, yeah. and that was a crazy moment. Do you think there's peer pressure associated with going up to somebody that you want to say hi to? Well, I feel like I'm in a unique position in my life because. I think I remember on the from the first time we did the the first meetup at the coffee shop. I remember talking to people and being like, "This is some shit I would be doing if yeah. I were them." Like I would am like one hundred times over, I would be in the situation where I was at the podcast meetup in Williamsburg for a podcast that most people don't know about. You know and what I mean? I would be right there yes. with you saying. Where the hell are you? You'd be we like, right I'm now? his friend. <laughs> yeah. I, he, he told me, like, um, he told me so much about you. Um, and so it's interesting because I do feel like I literally, I've been in those, we both have been in those shoes for sure so many times. Yeah. And it is really nerve wracking. There is a pressure. I feel like I, I mean, you know me when it comes to approaching someone who I consider like important to me. Yeah. Brain turns off, autopilot goes on, I just do it. Yeah. But there is like this, like, if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it feeling. It is the right time if you're in the same space and you feel comfortable doing it. Is there anyone you've met, like any big celeb you've met that you've gone up to and approached and said something to? And said like, no, no. I honestly, I think that who I wanted to do it to was Anna Sophia Robb. And it was an yeah. awkward situation because like we both just got off the spin bikes and we all were feeling it. But the fact that we were like cheers, toasting, it like was actually champagne. weird that we didn't like 
acknowledge the fact that who she like you know what i mean like it almost it was strange that it we didn't strange. acknowledge it we were just casually having a conversation we and were, not being it, like you're the it girl like you're the it you, girl like you're the moment she was your phone background like I, <laughs> again like all i was thinking in my head was like bridge to terabithia yeah like, it's so happy willy to wonka. see you like alive yes. like willy wonka i was thinking Deflated. i was thinking because of when dixie like all yes. of these things as she was like giving me a, a crunch and a press on the bike like and then yeah. afterwards, I couldn't even muster up the courage to say something. I know. All I need is somebody to tell me to do something, and I probably will do it. And like... Mm, yeah, well, that's been our entire I, friendship. Exactly. So I do believe I do succumb to peer pressure pretty easily because Am I'm Am I like, the peer that's been pressuring you, you think, your whole life? I kind of... Oh, my God. Okay, dude, I'm sorry that I'm going to play guitar. Why are you angry at me if you're playing guitar? Because you're just so good. I know. But you think I wanted to do this? You think I want to do this? I don't want to be. I want to be stage crew. Not whatever main lead. I don't want to be main lead. I do. You had so much to me, and you had to try out because with your amazing me, guitar skills. You told me to try out. You well, understand? maybe I was a little warm. Okay, so don't blame me. I'll be the man to play the best you can do. What? Am I supposed to play bad? Yeah, I know you sang bad. Because <laughs> I'm like, Andrew, just do it. Like, just you're obviously just just do it. And you're like, okay, fine. And then you're suddenly do you're entering a belly flop competition on the cruise. Just about to say like you're gonna get me like doing a tap dance routine. Yeah, yeah belly flop competition, sexy legs, sexy contest. legs contest. But that is where I experience peer pressure. Yes, from your entire family but, your family likes to peer pressure me but well, that's, what, that's how i but, live my life but it's it is pushing you to do something that people see you are gonna thrive in well that's like why i always do it i'm not like trying to i'm not like do drugs whenever i'm like do this thing it's because i'm like do it because you know you'll do a good job like you know you'll have fun i know i love to just do it Throw out your couch. Throw out your coach. Throw out your couch, your coach, and just do, do it. it. Nike has been saying it since day one. Were you pressured to dress a certain way in, like, school? Like, were you pressured to, like, go to certain things? I don't think I was necessarily pressured to dress a certain way. I think I put pressure on myself. Okay. To look a certain way. Why? Because, you know, whether it was hiding body, whether it was hiding myself whether it was exploring in colors you know the drill and just to point out you've come right back to it i because you know what hannah montana says you always find your way back home and you know where i found my way back to a pastel pink porky the pig you want to talk double p we're right here Anyways, um, I do think that we're gonna look back on these Birkenstock clogs with the same eyes as um the Sperry's. Yeah, I guess so. Like they're kind of the Sperry's of the new of this generation. I guess so. You really hate the Birkenstock clogs. I don't hate them at all. I actually really want a pair of them. I just I'm just saying comfort purposes from a third party perspective standpoint. I think that's what we'll see those shoes as. Yeah, because mine these are these are timeless. Your (laughs) military boots. This entire look is very normal. It's very normal. It's very timeless. You're looking. Um, it's looking really cool. It's something that Justin Bieber would wear. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry to bring it. I'm sorry to actually like undermine your entire outfit. By saying it's something Justin Bieber would wear. Yeah. It's really, I was, just to be clear, making a joke at my own expense. Yeah. Oh. Just want to make that really clear. No, but I think that you look very good. Yeah, I look ridiculous, but it looks good. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? I think that's what the theme of the past season of my clothes have been. Because do you feel peer pressure to dress a certain way? Um. And be honest. Yeah, no, I'll think about it for a second. I mean, I think... In high school, I felt actually less than peer pressure. I felt more like inspiration to dress a certain way. Like all I wanted to do was wear black skinny jeans and Mm. and Doc Martens and a band tee. Like that was like I wanted. And it wasn't like I was being pressured to. It was more so like an escape from like what everyone else was doing. Yeah. Like which has always been my vibe. I do think what's happening right now with me is more so. I do feel pressure lately that I'm like self-inflicted to wear something that is like visually disarming Mm. do you know what i mean like i want to always look a little bit odd and a little bit like out there it's very doja cat of you 
Thank you. Yeah, I am. I guess I am kind of this generation's Doja Cat. Do you, have you ever regretted a peer pressure situation? All the time. I think most things I do that I didn't really want to do, I ultimately really end up regretting. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't... Let me think of one. My story is not necessarily about peer pressure, but it is... Actually, it is. The story of when I s- smoked weed for the first time and smoked my first cigarette mm. in the same night and went to my first college party. And the thing is, that sounds like it might be a fun story where maybe Joe finally let loose. Mm. uh uh-uh. You wish it was actually for a short film, and that's how that's how my life has always gone. So I'm in eleventh. I'm in. I'm in. Actually, I don't know why I say eleventh. I'm a junior in college. Okay, this I'm is normal. I'm twenty years old. I'm twenty years old. Um, I don't think I've ever drank before, except like maybe like a Jack and Coke at a backyard barbecue. I have never smoked a cigarette. I've never smoked weed. I've only smoked my smoke machine. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, for content purposes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, for sure. And so. I'm bisexual. I'm in. I'm in film production classes. Mm-hmm. This girl comes up to me and she's like, "Joe, I don't really have any friends." This girl's like, "Joe, do you want to be? Have you? Do you smoke?" And I mean, and you say, the aura of who I am at that point. I said, "Yeah." Um, <laughs> and she was like, "Perfect. I need you to play the devil in my short film, which is about like weed." And I'm like, literally perfect. Let me know when and where. So cut to my mother and father are driving to drop me off at like his apartment complex near my college. They were like going out to dinner. So they dropped me off because again, I don't drive. Um, They drop me off. I'm getting into makeup. I'm like wearing like a heavy eyeshadow, have horns and a hat. And the setting of the movie is a college party on campus. So, like, this is my first experience with a college party is literally a technical film set. Like, there is lights, there are cameras, there are microphones, and I am, like, watching people my age, like, smoke and drink for literally the first time in my entire life. And the whole thing's on camera. Stop. As everything is. Can I... I... uh, Can we get a clip? I want to see you smoking your first. I have my camera. Of weed. I have it. I well, there's see a, it. there's a little bit of a a little about the weed part of it. It was tea leaves. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good to know that like <laughs> we can catch a liar in the act, but like I do believe that like tea leaves or weed. There was one real weed involved, but. I basically said, once I realized what I was doing, I was also about to get my first job at um, Newsday. Which, Were they drug testing? Yes, they drug test. So I was like, listen, I don't want to fuck up my job with like this short film. So can we like have both fake weed and real weed? Easy, no problem. I think also probably everyone was like, yeah, that's because you don't smoke weed and you lied. So You're like, no, uh, I'm getting drug tested next week. <laughs> um, so I go there. I'm lighting my first cigarette and smoking it on camera. I mean... Not to teach people how to smoke cigarettes, but, you know, you need to, like, keep whatever you're smoking. You typically in your mouth, light it, and then breathe in to, like, actually light it. I had no idea. Yeah. I was Googling. I was Googling. I was on WikiHow before Mm -hmm. this, Googling how to smoke a joint, how to smoke cigarette. Because I was like, how do I do this? How do I look normal and natural doing this thing? Mm -hmm. How does it make it? How do I make it seem like I do this every day? I am, like, I wish I had something to signify it. I'm holding the cigarette in front of me like almost inches like like a foot and a half away from me and like lighting the lighter incapable of even losing the lighter you're almost it's almost pointing downwards yes yeah 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 you're trying to light like this and then like the director is like baby like bring it to your mouth and then breathe in babe (sighs) yeah obviously having a coughing fit coughing fit like it's it's something that would make you genuinely throw up yes coughing 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 but somehow I managed and I actually was like I can handle this one the joint was a later scene because the, the first thing all I had to do was just look hot mm. it was like look hot in the corner take a drag from a cigarette and like look around at the party and I was like done easy the next thing the other thing was I was playing straight so I was playing a straight oh, devil geez. 
and I was offering this girl a joint and she had actually smoked and actually drank because it was really a college party. This went on until four in the morning. Four in the morning. I can't believe this that event. your parents let you do this. Because it was a short film. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah. no one, no one. Huh. The short film seems pretty like a long film. <laughs> it was, it was, I think it was two <laughs> nights in a row. Um, again, I'm doing the joint thing again. They have to explain to me how to roll the joint. Um, I'm like, <sighs> <laughs> and growing up just the humiliation oh yeah and course. the whole group of my literal peers watching me being embarrass capable. yourself yeah well it's because i think a lot of the times with peer pressure it becomes like you are doing it to be cool right mm-hmm. you want to be seen as cool yes and when it doesn't go the way that you were expecting it's straight up embarrassment it's and red it's, in the face yeah it was impossible for me to look cool at that moment to be cool would actually say you guys i actually don't smoke yeah tell no. me how to do it just like actually owning yeah the reality of your life versus like pretending to be something that you're not or saying no you know what no i actually like let me just do the fake stuff and like just teach yeah teach yeah. me how to do just it. tell me how to do it but it really it does like my mine i think i have a pretty similar story but it is like it always comes back to you and we've had a drinking episode in the past but like that was the first time i really do believe i experienced like real a PP. substance pp yeah. where again you're doing it to feel or seem cool right right you're like you already you know that event is happening tonight you're like people are going to be drinking in the woods or i'm going to this house party or i'm doing things like you're kind of mustering up the courage to do it but you're like i really don't know because the lingering thought in the back of my head is like i'm going to ruin my life right my life is ruined yes but you get there and it's like, oh, here's a beer, here's a this, here's a this. And you're like, oh my, okay. And like, it, it doesn't even have to be a big to-do that you have to, like, you can just willingly accept it. And it's still, for me, it was peer pressure. Oh yeah, of course. And like, yeah, 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 and yeah. a funnel came out, right? And you're like, Did oh, you do the funnel? I funneled my first time I ever oh, right, drank in my this. entire you life. This. Fod. And again, I didn't so- eat food. Uh, right, and I funneled. how would you know? Exactly. Yeah. For loco everything ran home threw up nothing let's fast forward a few years we're in college now i'm a binge drinker because you know we're 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 going through emotional places yeah but first night oh not first night one of the first nights at college i go out i drink i'm having a good time it was the first time i ever kissed a girl um we talked about this she said she said andrew's really good at hooking up andrew's really really good good at hooking hooking up. up and i do believe that quote could tombstone. go down in the history book. Yeah, that's tombstone quote. That's that's a <laughs> like, TSP. Here lies Andrew Muscarella Platt. Really good at hooking okay, up yeah. in quotes. In quotes. So like that's all you need to know about me. So we just basically sucked face um for a little bit in the dark. I definitely was feeling really weird. Were you not like loving it? No, I wasn't so this is this is how it worked that night. I was loving it for others around me that they were seeing you making out with a woman exactly there is an element to and it's fucked up but there is an element to like being closeted where you're kind of using women like i think like i mean because of the whole misogyny of gay men conversation but like yeah you got to bet you benefited from that yeah like which is crazy and like i do i mean like i'm taking it away from i'm dropping peer really quick and i'm just bringing it to pressure okay but i do think that i was feeling an immense pressure that night you were feeling queer pressure i was feeling i was feeling a queer pressure Yeah. yeah exactly because it was kind of like oh she's into you she's into you and i'm like oh yeah and then i was like let me get drunk and let me see where the night takes me i have so many things to say and then afterwards just bringing it right to you i went outside and the guy was next to me and this guy was next to me and he was like do you smoke cigarettes and i was like yeah i'll take a cigarette and then i smoked the cigarette and then again for the following week you can ask caroline i coughed as if though i had emphysema and never again really have i ever smoked a cigarette so that was peer pressure and I learned from my peer pressure. Okay. You would cough with emphysema for a week. That does make and I was, sense. Because I'm also dramatic. Yes, of course. I'm sure you were like, I can't, I can't even go to the gym. I wanted the talking <laughs> like, I wanted the talking point. So if I was coughing like that, people would be like, what happened? I'm like, I, I smoked, smoked a cigarette. cigarette. <laughs> um I that reminded me for a second. Oh, this is just like a little to take it to therapy for one moment. Please. It's interesting because to the point that you were saying you you're feeling this pressure from other people who mm. are like this girl's into you. But 
in reality, if you're straight, like someone could be into you, but you could be like, I'm not really into them. But you feel like this is almost your only shot. Yeah. And like Correct. any person who grew up feeling undesirable, you're like, this is my only shot to really have this thing. Mm-hmm. So you're going to go for it. Yeah. Because who else is going to like you? Nobody in your head, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, And that kind of carries through. Like, I feel like that carried through for me with gay dating. Mm-hmm. Like I had that thought process in like, college where it was like if someone was attracted to me i was like thank god someone is thank god somebody thinks i'm hot because no one else is going to so this rare and exceptional moment in my life i'm going to cling on to because Mm -hmm. it's not going to happen again yeah um so then i'd be put in situations that i didn't want to be in and like again fuck over myself and others but it's like that like mindset when does that go away how do you stop feeling like this is your only time you're going to find yeah. out the only time you're going to have sex. It's like the only time you're going to get these opportunities because no one else is going to like you. Because while you're to your point before, while you're feeling so undesirable, like on the other side of it, using somebody for your own benefit horrible. is a horrible thing. Horrible. To do. Yeah. So like it is reframing the narrative that like you are desirable. Other things are going to work out, whether it comes a man, a woman, whatever you're going for. But like, not just jumping on the first opportunity because you think that it's, it's a, make or break. Yeah. Very queer, queer pressure. pressure. Have you, are you, exp- like, I don't think that now, obviously you're in a relationship, but like maybe like going out, doing things like that, pride. Are you like, there's what definitely some queer, queer pressure around pride. There is some. Pr- it's interesting. It likes again. We talked about this for the, for our for our New York lovers. You may have heard some of this conversation at the live show, but we'll we will rephrase it. Um, I think it's interesting that when you come out, when you first come out, I mean, typically when you're a teenager, not for either of us and for many other people, but like that. Um, those like first few years of pride. Like I remember the first June post coming out where I, like, felt very different. Mm -hmm. I was like, this really matters. This month really matters. And, like, I have to get to the Pride Parade. Like, that was, like, the feeling. I was like, I must, 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 must buy some rainbow merch, and I must go to the Pride Parade. Mm -hmm. And thankfully... And an overall, right? You were an overall. I was a a tiny little overall. I had, like, rainbow stripes down the side. Yes. I was wearing BuzzFeed merch. Obviously. Um, I came out in the summer of 2017, graduated winter of 2018, went to started working at BuzzFeed two months later and then like by that pride. summer went to my first pride. June twenty nineteen. June twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. All in that same all within a wow. year was coming out and going to pride coming out, graduating, getting my first real that's job quick. and going to Pride. But I feel like that's how it goes. I really do believe that like it, you can go one of two ways. But you chose the way that was like, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna immediately throw myself into this. But, but like didn't an really idea it was of what more it was. like on Instagram I was throwing myself into it. But in real life I wasn't really exploring yeah. what it meant to actually be gay. It was more like I just um, knew what I should, like, what the checklist of what being mm-hmm. gay should be. And I was, like, checking it off. But I wasn't actually, like, getting to know my gay self or gay people. Yeah. However. You, you performatively being gay. Yes. To show that you were and people to take you seriously as a gay man. Yes. I saw a TikTok of um, Ashley from Celebrity Memoir Book Club talking about Gen Z. And she was saying how, like, there are certain, t- like rules and etiquette of like concerts or like social mm. spaces that like gen z is lacking because in her opinion i kind of, i agree um they were like raised online and like in the pandemic specifically they were able to like socially enter spaces without actually being in those rooms yeah. and actually knowing what it meant to be in those spaces so like when they actually entered them, they're like, well, I'm a master of this subject because I know everything because I was on the internet, which is not false. Yeah. And not like a bad thing. It's just how it works now. But I think that that is exactly how being gay felt for me. Like I like knew Grindr. I knew Instagram. I knew Twitter. Like I knew what the social media workings of mm-hmm. a gay life were. But I, when I would then actually enter queer spaces later on in life, I was like panic zone. Yeah. Because I actually had no idea how gay people interact with each other. No. And so I had no idea what to do or how to speak to another gay person. You knew how you needed to look. You knew how you needed to edit that face and that body. Mm-hmm. And you knew exactly what you needed to wear. And that was rainbow. Yes. 
and a little scarf. Yeah, even now though, it's yeah. like even now, like I'm doing the Bushwick queer look, but yeah. like, and now I mean, it's a little bit better. I can talk. I have gay friends, and I'm in gay oh, spaces yeah. a lot more. But it's still like, there's this level where I'm like, when am I, how do I talk to you? How do I have this I conversation? Think, I think it goes back to like a pressure of feeling like you need to have everything figured out within the first year, two years, five years, ten, whatever, yeah. however many years. But recognizing that the timeline is different for every single person and you're constantly getting more comfortable yeah. in spaces, right? Like you might thrust yourself into going to Fire Island or you might throw yourself to going to Pride Parade, but still not feel comfortable because you're still working on yourself yeah but it's showing to other people that you're like oh like I know. i'm so comfortable i know who i am i'm doing all of these things right but like social it is media it's is like a crutch. i feel like i need to be an expert this is not even about this is about it is about being gay but it's about everything else in the world i feel like i need to be an expert on everything before i do it do you know what i mean yeah, i know exactly and if i'm mean. not i'm in a panic zone oh like, yeah if i'm not an expert on exactly what will happen to me if i go to a certain party or go to a certain place if i'm like i mean in high school i would study led zeppelin albums if i wore a led zeppelin shirt so that if someone dared be like you actually don't like led zeppelin i could like name 15 songs and the difference between me and you is once you gave me that led zeppelin tank i didn't look up one single song i was like i need to be a real i need to be a pro at this thing yeah. if i'm gonna if i'm gonna claim it yep um and that's a big struggle to it's this like, day it's like i need to i just can't accept not knowing something i can't accept being the learner and no. not the leader because can you imagine being a pro pros normally are pros in one thing, maybe two things, I but you want to be a pro, be a pro at everything. everything. So you know what you're going to be continuously doing, trying to like fight for that spot or learn that next thing or do that next thing. But it's only, and I don't want to bring it back to like not being good enough, but like if you don't reach that caliber, then you just, it almost hurts more. Yeah. You know? Than to be like, it's okay if I'm not doing that. Or it's okay if I don't know that. Tell me about it. Right. Yeah. Teach me. I want people to teach me things. Stop. You want to be taught. Yeah. Wait, that's really sweet. That's, yeah. Okay, that's that's honestly a really good thing to recognize. That's a big takeaway. I kind of think that like this kind of turned into therapy in a way that we weren't expecting. But I think that's a huge takeaway. It's always turning into therapy. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Like I think it's like we're you're learning and you're growing. You're obsessed with learning and growing. I'm obsessed with learning and growing. I can't get enough of it. Uh, Any other opportunities or spaces where you felt peer pressure? Hmm. 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 I'm not somebody who like again, I think that with with queer pressure, especially as you're getting a little bit older, there is like the drug scene. Yeah. Right? I don't think I'm happy that I'm somebody who like can say no to things that yeah. I don't want to do. But those are experiences that I've had recently where I'm like, I feel the pressure, but I'm at a place in my life where I'm like, I know what I want. Yeah. And if that's what I wanted, I would do it. But I, it's not sometimes what I want. Yeah. Sometimes. Feel it sometimes when you go to the queer spaces, the eagle. It yeah. depends on like the genre of a queer space that you're going to enter. It might have a different connotation. It might be a sex club. It might be not a sex club. It might be whatever. On one hand, like I, yeah, I know what I want. I know what I'm comfortable with. And at the end of the day, the most important thing in my life is if I'm going out, all I want is to go home feeling okay mm -hmm. and wake up feeling good. Do you know what I mean? Go home feeling okay being in a conscious mind to say, wash I face, do want cheap, taco, drink bell, water, eat, and food, then shower, exactly go to sleep. sleep. Yeah. Like have a really cozy little night. Yeah. No matter what time it is. Exactly. And then wake up and not wake up at 4 p.m. and mm -hmm. ruin my whole day. No. I, on the other hand, and I'm not advocating for drug use, do the times in my life now as an adult where I feel the most peer pressure is around drugs because yeah. I am like, I'm a fucking loser. loser. Because I don't do ketamine. Yeah. Which is crazy. Which is a crazy statement to even make. Because again, like, as long as you... I think that I'm somebody who I can have fun in situations, like, period, if I'm in the right mindset. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, it's a mindset thing. If I don't want to go to the club and I'm going to be there with my friends, I might be a misery. Yeah. Right? Which, but if yeah. I'm... Which happens sometimes. But if I'm going out and I'm in a positive mood and I'm like, I'm ready to have fun. Like, people... You can do the drugs around me. 
I'm not going to judge you. Yeah, that's something. That I think that actually is part of it. I think that people do feel judgment when you don't yes. do it. And, I, and I, I am not someone who really gives a single fuck. But it is, yeah, it is definitely the biggest peer pressure thing now as an adult. But I'm like, you're like, I'm 20, almost 27. You're going to peer pressure me to do ketamine? Like, it's okay. Like, and again, but I, do I feel like a loser? Like, do I feel like there are, there could be gay people listening to this podcast who are like, they're fucking weird for not doing that shit? Yeah, which is crazy. Do you know what I mean? I don't feel a single thing. Let them it's say just, it's crazy. I like, know. I, because you know what? Like, I feel good about the choices that I'm making. And if they feel good about the choices that they're making, that's literally all that matters. You're really right. Because if I'm in the same spaces as them, I can still be friends with people. Like, it doesn't matter. And who knows? Who knows? But, like, for right now, I feel very good. I feel very comfortable. And I'm not going to let someone peer pressure me to do something I don't want to do in that situation. Because I think that what we're learning here through this episode is like, it doesn't go away. Peer pressure doesn't go away. Yeah. When I was 16 years old and I was feeling peer pressure to funnel, right? I could have said no. But afterwards, I threw up and I couldn't throw up anything. And I felt sick. You're and throwing was, up nothing air? So no, what are you saying? Like, I was like throwing like uh, acid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the clear shit. Mm-hmm. That comes out and you're like, who is she? That doesn't really happen to me, but I think that you have an exceptional. Oh, because I have like severe acid reflux. Yeah. Yeah. But now again, 27 years old and you feel like you're 16 all over again, right in the woods. Good children to the guidance office. Then you blink and it's I haven't used this iPad years. since I called you out for lying about Candyland. Okay. Hi. I know you guys are doing your live show right now, but I couldn't go. Could work. So I'm calling this in this question. Um, but I just kind of want to know what you guys think about starting a new job, like right after college, like when you come out of that, especially if you were someone who was super involved in college, who was in a bunch of clubs, all this stuff, and then having to go out and find a job and start in a new place after you have kind of like established yourself and maintaining who you are, but also at the same time, like fitting this new role that you find yourself in. Um, I love you both. Hey. Hey. It is really interesting. I mean, like, again, you spend four years of your life trying to meet people and, like, making a new life for yourself for some people. And that's why you join all of these clubs. You do all of these things. You're like, this is it. And you don't think about what's to come afterwards because then you start fresh. You do. I think, like, I mean, it depends on the workplace that you decide to start in. Like, not every corporate space or not every workplace is identical. But I think that, like, as we progress and as the years go on, they're making workplaces more like college. Maybe Mm -hmm. that's just where I've been and maybe where you've been, too. Like, it's more of, like, a fun environment to get involved and to you know, work your it way It is kind up. of crazy. Yeah. Like, I thinking about BuzzFeed, I'm like, that was literally my college experience. It's college. Like, why were there clubs? There's clubs. There's food. There's, there's parties. Parties. There's, like, um, off-sites. There's yeah. extracurriculars, basically. It's, like, people probably, I don't know if there was, like, sports BuzzFeed, like, I doing dodgeball or whatever. There may have been. So, like, those are avenues to explore, especially in your workplace, is to, like, yeah, you can show up to work every single day and you can leave, but you can also take advantage of, like, the different meetings that they're having or the different like organizations or fundraisers or things like that to like meet new people and like find commonalities with them. Yeah. I also think don't be afraid to start completely new. Um, Like if you end up at a small company, like Mm -hmm. there is a lot of opportunity in places like that to really figure out who you really are outside of like the identity of like the clubs and the organizations you're involved in. Like once you're like, once you're truly on your own kid, like who you are floats to the top. You know, like, yeah. these are my actual priorities. These are like what I actually care about and not because they like make me who I am. Mm-hmm. Good children. Oh whoa, my God, Brittany. Whoa. Which is kind of you. Guys, I don't know why I have this like urge, but I'm like drunk calling you. This is my second call. I'm drunk calling. I love. I'm feeling crazy. I'm feeling wild. But, all right, I'm shortening my last call because, come on, two minutes and a voicemail and get it together. Um, this one's a minute and 40. <laughs> basically, what does it mean when every time I've hung out with a guy or even hooked up with a guy recently, the past, what, six, 
six months of my life, I've gotten pink eye. <laughs> what does that mean? Stop. Like, I could just be literally hanging out with a man and I get pink eye the next day. <laughs> Something's really, really wrong here. I don't even hang out with guys that much. I'm very, like, hesitant. I'm very picky. Whatever. What does it mean? I keep getting pink eye. <sighs> I don't even wear makeup anymore. I keep switching it out. But every time I've hooked up with a guy, I hung out with a guy, I get pink eye. So. I can hear her say that over and over again. I don't know. Tell me. Love you. I love you guys. But, like, why do I keep getting pink eye? You probably don't know. I don't know. But I'm just asking you. Bye. The fact that it's different men. It's it's not the same. You're getting pink eye from multiple different men. The one question that. The question that I beg to ask is, like, are you you eating ass? ass? Like. (laughs) <laughs> because how else is this coming about unless they're wiping their ass on their pillows and you're sleeping on it listen maybe are you sleeping over because this is the yeah. thing maybe what they're doing is like jerking off and when you're sitting on your pillow i mean you wouldn't sit on your pillow but i don't know what you know what I mean? Like you're sitting at the top of your bed and you're just like doing it and your ass just like out. I listen, I'm just trying to theorize here. I'm no I'm no optometrist. But you are someone who has you've suffered from chronic pink eye almost once a month. Yeah, but Joe. We know why. I eat ass. You had a year of celibacy and you had pink eye for most Yeah, of no, it. the reason that I had that is because again, wash your hands. Um oh. Wash your hands in general. I think that, like, you know, maybe you have allergies. Okay. It seems like it's a real issue, a real medical issue here. Um, Do you have any, Doc, do you have any advice? I would say... No, I I guess I would just really be careful about the... The kinds of men that I'm being around, like I have a like I in my head, if you're getting pink eyes from like hot skater bros, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's I also it's you know what it's what's more important, what's what's more important to you, your vision or the men? Because if it's the men, you get the pink eye exactly. But if you want to take proactive measures, the next time that you're with a man, a goggle. (laughs) <laughs> wear wear goggles wear onion goggles wear anything that you see fit wear glasses or maybe buy some prescription eye drops before you even get there and give them a little squeeze before you even get up in any business that you're gonna continue this is with. a crazy situation to be in it's almost like you were cursed by a witch yeah um but please continue to call us and like i actually want data research analysis like yeah Give us information on each man from this yeah. point forward and whether or not you leap with pink eye. We're honestly pink eye gurus. Yeah, we're peg- we have we're pegs. To, we are pe- we're pegs. <laughs> we're, I actually like I don't even want to play this message because I feel bad. It's it's a response from Tinkerbell. And I feel like we should and Tinkerbell, if you're listening, we've I mean, I personally have forgiven and forgotten. It wasn't even me that you spoke to. I don't even think I was upset. <laughs> I think that, like, I was almost peer pressured to being upset. Like, I I think you were being creative. And I think that, like, listen, we we laughed and we learned. We laughed, and, like, we learned. And you know what? It got great engagement. It got incredible engagement. And we never... I don't want you to feel like... I mean, no. We learned. We all... Everyone learned. We learned. And I appreciate that... Don't Tink- feel bad. Though. I appreciate that Tinkerbell called up. I appreciate that we can i hope that you saw our story weeks ago saying like all is good but if not this is your moment to completely clarify we love you we love you and like it was actually tinkerbell to be honest it was probably a really good learning lesson for a lot of other people so like at the end of the day like what we learned together as a group was like Maybe someone else's dynamic change with their friend. Maybe someone else's dynamic change for sure. And just like that. And just like that. Um, we I wish laughed. that was an ad promo. I would kill. I, I would kill for that. Literally yeah. kill. Um, I would kill for an ad. An ad. What is that about? <laughs> like, all of these 
brands, all of these ads. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Good Children. You know what to do to do your homework. You like, comment, subscribe, rate, review. Follow. 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 You know where to find us, Good Children Pod, across all platforms. We got a little bit of extra credit for you this week. We do. We do. We have a Patreon. And the Patreon is just seven whopping bucks a month. And what you get with Patreon, you get stories we wouldn't even dare dare to say on on the podcast. You get, actually, last week's episode was, well, I guess two weeks ago now, was, I think, life-changing conversation between us about sex and dating. Life-changing. Um. You get exclusive vlogs, you get little posty wosties. Sometimes we go live. Sometimes we go live. We went live twice and we're planning on going live again soon. Um, Yeah, don't forget to check out our Patreon. And you can find us on Instagram at Joe Hedges and TikTok at Be Quiet Joe. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscrella and on TikTok at Andrew underscore M U S K Y. And you guys, we hit 100K on TikTok. Ah! Isn't that crazy? Oh, that's nuts. It's been a long time coming. A long time coming. And yeah, we'll see you next week for another episode. We'll see you. Thank you for tuning in. Time for chicken cutlets. I'm going to eat in a scary way. Yeah, I'm going to have about four to five chicken cutlets. Yeah, the Patreon that we're going to shoot after this, it's going to be burpy warpy. Yeah, for under pressure, dun ba da bum bum, bum 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 ba da bum bum. Under pressure. When we do the baseline, you can do the vo- vocals. Yeah. Zoom zoom zoom, this is zoom zoom. Zoom zoom zoom, this is zoom zoom. Under pressure. Zoom zoom zoom, this is zoom zoom. Zoom zoom zoom, this is zoom zoom. Under pressure. Zoom zoom zoom, this is zoom zoom. Zoom zoom zoom, this is zoom zoom. Under pressure. Zoom zoom zoom, this is zoom zoom. I mean, how many words are in that song? Just under pressure. Under pressure. Coming down on me, coming down on you, oh, queer pressure. I don't like when you use the queer word, the cute word. The queer word. (laughs)